Hello, I'm Dr. Jacob Hudis, and welcome to Quantum Mechanics Math Foundations Lecture 3, Part C, Wave Function Mathematics and the Continuous Basis of Position and Momentum. Here's a preview of what's to come. I'll begin by introducing the position eigenfunctions in the position basis, these are the Dirac delta functions. I'll discuss properties of the Dirac delta functions. I'll review the mathematical operations that you can perform on Dirac delta functions. One of the most important ones is the generator of position translation, and I'll go over this in detail. Next, I'll move on to the momentum eigenfunctions in the position basis. I'll discuss the properties of the complex exponential functions. I'll review the mathematical operations that can be performed on the complex exponential function, and there will be a detailed discussion on the generator of momentum translation. At the end of the talk, I'll explain how the Schrodinger equation is an eigenvalue equation whose eigenvectors are generally a linear combination of position and momentum basis functions. The eigenfunctions of energy are not purely or position momentum eigenfunctions, but rather they're a combination of both. On this slide, I present the two fundamental orthogonal complementary bases that are used to build any function. There's the Dirac delta function, and the complex exponential. Any wave function in quantum mechanics can be expressed as a linear combination of either position or momentum eigenfunction. Understanding these two basis functions is crucial for studying quantum mechanics. They provide the framework for describing the state of a quantum system in terms of measurable quantities, such as position and momentum. To fully grasp the behavior and properties of quantum systems, one must become familiar with these two essential functions. This is what we'll be discussing in this presentation. This is the position representation in the position basis, which is the Dirac delta function. This is the momentum representation in the position basis, and this is the complex exponential. Two bases, one reality, position and momentum in quantum mechanics. In quantum mechanics, there are two fundamental bases that any wave function can be decomposed into, the position basis and the momentum basis. The position basis describes the state of a particle in terms of its position. The momentum basis describes the state of a particle in terms of its momentum. We'll explain this nomenclature on the next few slides. In quantum mechanics, the position basis consists of states that describe a particle's precise location in space. The momentum basis, on the other hand, consists of states that describe the particle's momentum. And this is a fundamental relationship in quantum mechanics, which is that the momentum is equal to h bar times k, where k is the wave number. Let's discuss the position representation in the position basis, and this is the Dirac delta function. Ket x, this is a vector that represents a particle location x. Likewise, ket x1 is a vector that represents a particle location x1. These vectors can be represented in different bases, and one of the bases they can be represented in is the position basis. So when I write the bra like this, that represents this particle in the position basis, and it's equal to the Dirac delta function. The delta function is the position representation in the position basis. x1 equals delta of x minus x1. This represents a particle location x1 in the position basis. To plot the delta function, delta of x minus c, for example, would be a spike at location c, and that means that there's a particle located at position c. And it's easy to understand writing a point in two different bases. For example, here's a point in space. This point can be written in the xy basis, and it can also be written in the x prime y prime basis, and there'd be different values for xy and x prime y prime, but it would represent exactly the same point. And in the same way, this x, which is a position in space, it's always a position in space, but it's going to be represented differently in different bases, although it means the same thing and it'll be physically plotted as the same thing. Now I want to talk about the important properties of the Dirac delta function. The orthogonality condition ensures that different position states represented by the Dirac delta function are mutually exclusive. This is the orthogonality condition. The completeness relation indicates that any wave function can be expressed as a sum over position eigenstates, emphasizing the ability to reconstruct the wave functions entirely from these basis functions. Any function psi, or any function f of x, doesn't have to be psi, we use psi for quantum mechanics, can be written as a linear combination of these basis functions where the basis functions of the Dirac delta function. This is a complete and orthonormal basis. The title of this slide is Mathematical Operations on Position Basis Functions. Are you in need of a great physics tutor? Dr. Hudis can help. Whether you're preparing for a high school test, AP test, or college exam, let me help you ace it. In quantum mechanics, there are three primary operations on eigenfunction. You can multiply a function by a constant x, represented by an integral to encompass all x values. This is the position operator. The position operator is simply multiplying a function by x. The Dirac delta function is an eigenfunction of the position operator. When you act the position operator onto the Dirac delta function, you scale it. You simply get x prime multiplied by the Dirac delta function. Another operation you can do is you can multiply the function by a phase. u equals e to the i alpha. 
and if I multiply the Dirac delta function by e to the i alpha, it applies a phase to it. This is relatively trivial because everything is an eigenfunction of the phase operator. Another operation you can do in quantum mechanics is the momentum operator. And the momentum operator in quantum mechanics is minus i h bar d by dx. The momentum operator is not directly applied to position eigenfunction. Instead, it must be exponentiated to transform from a Hermitian operator to a unitary operator. The exponential of the momentum operator serves as the generator of position translation. I will explain it clearly here and on the next slide. These operations are crucial for understanding quantum mechanics. If I operate e to the i p epsilon over h bar onto any function f of x, it will give me f of x plus epsilon. For example, e to the i p epsilon over h bar at, acting on a delta x is equal to delta of x plus epsilon. This slide shows how applying the translation operator to the Dirac delta function moves it to a new position. This is delta of x. If I apply the translation operator e to the minus i p epsilon over h bar onto delta of x, but now I replace epsilon with 0.1, that moves the Dirac delta function from zero to 0.1. This is why we call it the generator of position translation. If I take e to the minus i, 5p over h bar onto delta x, that's equal to delta of x minus five. Notice that the scale here is different than the scale here, so don't get confused with that. This diagram demonstrates the translation operator in quantum mechanics. The most important thing you need to understand is that this translation operator causes the function to shift one way or the other, and this is how it's used to model systems in quantum mechanics. On this slide, I'm going to prove if you act the generator of position translation onto the function, it's equal to f of x plus epsilon. Here's the proof. Any exponential can always be written in terms of the Taylor series sum. This is an identity. It's a sum from n equals 0 to infinity, 1 over n factorial, of whatever is in the exponent to the nth power. This is the generator of position translation. Therefore, if I act the generator of translation, if I act the generator of position translation onto f, that's equal to this. And that is the proof because this, by definition, is the Taylor series for f of x plus epsilon. This is not a very hard proof. I recommend you think about it and make sure you understand it. But most importantly, what you should understand is that this operator causes the function to move from one x location to another. It shifts the function one way or another. AcePhysics.org, math and physics tutoring with Dr. Hudis. Now I want to move on to the momentum representation in the position basis. Ket p is a vector that represents a particle that has momentum p. It has constant momentum. Ket p1 is a vector that represents a particle with momentum p1. This function corresponds to a particle with constant momentum, and this function corresponds to a particle with constant momentum p1. This is the complex exponential. This is the important function that represents the constant momentum. This function is a function of x. The p in the exponent is constant. One p-value corresponds to multiple different x-values because if a function has one momentum value, it's necessarily spread out through all different position values. This is the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. This slide explains how we write the momentum vector in the position basis. The momentum functions satisfy orthogonality. The orthogonality condition ensures that different momentum states, represented by complex exponentials, are mutually exclusive. The inner product of pi with pj is equal to the Dirac delta function of pi minus pj. That means that two momentum states can't overlap. If two states have different momentums, they're separate states and they can't overlap. There's also the completeness relationship. The completeness relation indicates that any wave function can be expressed as a sum over momentum eigenstates, emphasizing the ability to reconstruct the wave function entirely from these basis states. This is the Fourier transform, and this is the inverse Fourier transform. On this slide, I discuss the mathematical operations that can be performed on momentum basis functions. This is written in the position basis. What operations can we do to the complex exponential function to keep it a complex exponential function? We've already learned there are three fundamental operators. One of them is the momentum operator. P equals minus i h bar d by dx. This is a Hermitian operator, and it turns out that this is an eigenvalue equation. If I act this operator onto the complex exponential, I get p times the complex exponential back. It scales it. This is a Hermitian operator, which means it has eigenvectors that span the space. These functions span the space, and it has real eigenvalues, and p, the momentum values, are all real eigenvalues. Another operation we can do is the phase operator, e to the i alpha. The phase operator 
multiplies the eigenstate by a phase factor, which does not change the physical properties of the state. The position operator is another operator in quantum mechanics. The position operator does not act directly on the momentum basis functions. Instead, the momentum translation operator does. The momentum translation operator, T delta P, this translates the momentum by some small amount delta P, is the exponential of the position operator, E to the minus I delta P X over H bar. This is the um, momentum translation operator. If I act the momentum translation operator onto a state psi of p, it changes it to a state with a new momentum, psi of p plus delta p. The momentum translation operator is e to the minus i. This is some small change in momentum, x over h bar. If I operate this onto psi of p, I can replace psi of p with what it is. It's the complex exponential e to the minus i p x over h bar. When I multiply these two together, this gives me this function, and this function is by definition psi of p plus delta p. This is a complex exponential with a constant p plus delta p, x is a variable. Here's how you visualize the complex exponentials. The blue function here is a function with one momentum. Its momentum value is related to the number of turns per unit length. How tightly wound this is, is how you interpret the momentum. But I'm going to call this state e to the i p0 h times x. That's the blue state. Now, if I want to take it to a new momentum state, I would operate on this state by the momentum translation operator, and I'll just replace epsilon with three, and this gives me a new function, which is gonna have a higher momentum. This new function is the red function. You can see the red function is more turns per unit length. It's a higher momentum state, and the momentum translation operator translated the function and moved the function from the blue state to the red state, and it moved it from one momentum state to a momentum state of higher momentum. You could also move it to a momentum state of lower momentum, and that would be, for example, t of minus three, or t of minus point one or whatever the case may be. On this slide, I want to talk about the Hamiltonian operator in quantum mechanics. The Heisenberg uncertainty principle states that the more accurately we know a particle's position, the less we know about its momentum and vice versa. Mathematically, this relationship means that momentum and position are expressed in complementary basis. The kinetic energy of a particle depends on its momentum, while the potential energy depends on its position. This is super important, that's why it's in bold. This is true for classical mechanics as well as for quantum mechanics. The eigenvectors of kinetic energy are complex exponentials, whereas the eigenvectors of potential energy are the Dirac delta functions. The Hamiltonian is an operator. P is momentum. Momentum is replaced with the momentum operator minus I h bar d by dx. This has complex exponential eigenfunctions, which are eigenfunctions of constant momentum. V is the potential energy. It's written in terms of position operators. The eigenfunctions of the position operators are Dirac delta functions. The eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian operator are generally in a basis that is a combination of both position and momentum pure states. On this slide is a summary of the position basis functions and the momentum basis functions, both written in the position basis. The position basis functions are the Dirac delta functions. The momentum basis functions are the complex exponentials. And any function can be written as a linear combination of the complex exponentials, just like any function can be written as a linear combination of the Dirac delta functions. On this slide, I just plot one complex exponential, a sum of eight complex exponentials, and a sum of a hundred complex exponentials. And this gives you some idea of how if you sum up a whole bunch of complex exponentials, you get a delta function. This is not an integral. That's why you get this kind of Dirac comb, this sum of delta functions. But you can see it's flat. And then once you get to two pi, there's a spike. And then it's flat again, and then a spike. And so this helps visualize that summing up complex exponentials equals a delta function, and it should be clear that summing up delta functions with different phases equals a complex exponential. Are you in need of a great physics tutor? Dr. Hudis can help. Whether you're preparing for a high school test, AP test, or college exam, let me help you ace it.